So the tracker is back again, and this time we are taking a detour via technology to Turkey. Um, Joseph Atama Lawe is the guest on the tracker today. For most people who don't know, Atama was the first person to record a version of the tracker. And I remember uh, that you gave me my first ever signed football jersey. So big shout outs to you uh, for that one. That time it was Istanbul Basak here, And uh, a lot has happened between that time and now. You, you are playing for uh, Fatih Karagomruk. I hope I got that name right. Fatih Karagomro. Yeah, nice one. Nice yeah. one. At, at least my Turkish is not that bad. Um, t tell me what's been going on with you because we haven't, we haven't heard from you in a while. It's been close to nine weeks um, since this entire COVID-19 situation started. Football was suspended. Where have you been as far as um, Turkey itself is concerned and how are you coping where you are? Yeah, I've, um, I've been in, uh, in Istanbul since uh, this uh, virus issue started. And uh, I've been in the house uh, for like maybe one month, staying in the house, just doing uh, personal training, like um, having a, 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 some section trainings from uh, one of a friend of mine uh, from the UK, but I got the training with him online, and, and some of the training also from the club. They give us program that we have to do in the house so that when we start training, it will be easier for us to cope mm. with their training also. So that is it. I'm just being in the house because uh, there's no place for me to go because it's locked down here. Yeah. So I have to stay in there. Yeah, you know. Mm. It's quite boring, but like, you know, I have to just cope with it because yeah. I have nothing to do than stay home and mm. obey the, the rules that they've been given. That's, that's interesting. Now, we know that for most of you athletes, you've had to self-isolate alone. Uh, firstly, are you alone? And I'm asking this because as athletes, you are usually supposed to go by a certain strict diet, like eat certain food so you are in shape for training and stuff like that. Are you alone? And if you are, how have you been coping with having to cook or having to um, get your own nutrition going? Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm alone in the house. Uh, I'm alone and I've been cooking myself and um, training. Maybe I wake up in the morning. I have to do my workout, like my morning workout mm -hmm. after I take my breakfast. And in the afternoon, maybe I will call a couple of friends and we can talk or maybe watch some yeah. movies or see. And in the evening, I will try to do something small, like small workout also. Mm. Tell me about what you've been cooking. Tell me about what you've been cooking. You said you've been cooking breakfast and stuff. What have you been cooking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I normally, you know, I love, I love rice. So I, I, I normally eat rice a lot. Like maybe let's say I cook uh, rice, maybe jollof rice or plain rice with stew, or mm. maybe plain rice uh, with uh, this uh, gano stew, uh, gano soup. Okay. Also. Hmm. Yeah. So hmm. that is like also the food that I eat. And maybe I eat stew with uh, potato or maybe bean stew with uh, rice. But I don't normally eat like uh, banku and those kind of stuff. <laughs> but, can, but can you make banku at home though? Banku and okra for yourself or some of pepper? Course. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I can I, I can. I can actually prepare banku, and, but I don't eat okra, so that is a problem. Oh, okay, that's that's cool. That's cool. That sounds, that sounds really, uh, really interesting. Now, tell me a little bit about, I mean, having to maintain your discipline to. Um, adhere to the training regime your team has given you because clearly it's not the same as being on the pitch and being supervised by your coaches and also being motivated by your teammates. How how challenging has this been for you? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I, I, I feel boring, you know, in the house, like doing, uh, doing the training by myself because uh, I'm alone here. I don't have, like, friends that are, that are around me. I do everything by myself, so sometimes I just feel boring. And, you know, I have to call. Uh, I have one guy that I, like he always calls to check up on me to see if I'll train or not. You know, mm -hmm. so that is a guy that like I've been motivating me uh, every day mm. during this uh, period. Of, you know, you have to call me and ask, hey, boy, have you done your training? If I said no, then he was okay. Let 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 me call you on video and let me see if you are if you are working or you're not. Then I have to call him on video. Then I'll start doing my workouts. And after then, he will say, "Okay, fine, you're done with it, so you can just go and shower, eat, or whatever, do whatever thing that you want." And, you know, he was the one that like you know motivating me. Mm -hmm. 
mm. with the coaching uh, with the team also they've been giving us program and you know the coach will call you to ask you like like how are you doing are you coping with the training if you find something like anything difficult you should just let them know so that they can easily yeah. contact you so that they will just let you know what you're supposed to do so it was good and you know the president of the club the technical director uh, you know they'll be calling you to check up on you every like you know three days to see how things are going to mm. now like like before today i really had gone off the radar a little with regards to tracking you and i, I wasn't too sure when you moved to uh karagomro but i thought you were doing really well with razor sport what what happened eventually to have you move from razor sport to karagomro and tell us a bit about how you um, adapted to life in your new club as well oh okay um the first thing is um when, after the AFCON, uh, I came back to Basakshi. So when I joined the, the club, already they've already uh, went to pre-season. So left with, uh, let me say, some few weeks for the season to start, and I joined the club. So I learned I get an offer from, uh, we had a new coach, actually. And, you know, with the new coach, I wasn't far with the team mm -hmm. in pre-season. So it's, like, difficult. But, like, mm -hmm. I was okay, like, a few weeks, I was okay with him, and like he likes the kind of player I am because he already know me from the in the league, so I'm cool with him. But he has already made his uh, squad already before I joined the team, so um, I end up getting an offer from uh, Razor Sport and most of the clubs. But with Razor Sport and uh, Basakshi, I, I learned they have this uh, communication, like you know, this contacts mm -hmm. that yeah. like. Yeah, it's easier, you know, so I have to uh, join with this ball. And before I have to play, uh, we are we playing, uh, I think, uh, Champions League qualifies with uh, Basakshi. So I end up playing my last game with Basakshi, uh, with uh, Olympiakos in Greece, mm. Champions League qualifies, before I left. So I played that game the next day when we landed in Istanbul, when I, I fly to Rizzo Sport to sign my loan contract with them. As in like one year contract mm. with, uh, with, yeah so when the season starts that was playing like every week i'm in the squad playing but it got to like uh four yeah i think yeah four matches to to end the the first one i don't know what came and the coach started giving me some attitude as in like um he don't want to play me he just put me in the bench you know to frustrate me but like I keep my calm and just focus on my training and so he was the one. Mm. Now talk talk to me a little bit about um how your time in Turkey helped you to adapt to the new situation Julie, because what? It's, it's not a top flight team. It's, it's one step lower than you are typically used to. Um, were you a little hurt that you had to go lower or for you, you are motivated to play football regularly and so that's what matters? Yeah. Yeah, no, for me, I'm, I'm motivated to play football. That is the, that is the most important thing. Like, because if us, it's, it's football, then I have to. I don't care whether it's, it's lower division or higher division. You know? And before that, I have a couple of, like, uh, clubs in, in, in the Super League but because I play for Basakshi and I play for Rizzo Sports so I end up, I cannot play for the third team in Super League so I have to just go down to the lower division and play so that was what happened when I joined the uh, first mm. Tell me about what it feels like to watch what Basak Sheri has become now. You know, uh, your, your time you had Gael Clichy, you had Emmanuel Adebayo, you had a couple of big guns in there. Now, um, that, that team has sort of broken up. You yourself are in the Division 1 now. What, what went wrong with that setup there uh, with, with regards to Basak Sheri? And how uh, much do you think you guys could have achieved together because you were a key player in that setup how much could you have achieved together as a group if perhaps you had still been together now yeah i know uh, for now if 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 we still be together now i think the league is now it's not going to be difficult for us because we, we already know what we're doing and we already we already know what the league itself is 
because having a player like Daikichi, Imana Dibayo, and uh, I think uh, Dembaba, uh, most of the players, yes, I think they all know the, they know the league, and I think uh, this season, if we were together, or if the if the club maintain us, it's gonna be easier for us, and I think we're gonna achieve like to win the, the trophy. But like you know, it depends. Like everything happened for a reason. Like the reason why we all went to our, on our separate way. Well, I mean, ca can you say that when when you were outlining your journey from Bashak Shahir to uh, Karagumruk now, you like I said, you were top guy from Bashak Shahir now. You are playing the Division One. Would you say that something went wrong? Was it an injury? Was it just the Afcon, or you just think that these are factors that perhaps you can't really control? You know, nothing, nothing uh, went wrong actually. You know, and in football, you have to be ready for anything because you don't know what uh, what will happen next. Maybe this is the time that like something happened to me in my life as a football player, so I have to just accept it and just let it go. And this is not a time for me to just. Uh, mm -hmm. Buy down my head, or just say like all hope is lost. All hope is not lost because mm -hmm. I mean the team that like we to, to qualify the team to to the Super League. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm I'm just doing best as 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 a football player and like the way I'm doing mm -hmm. in the Super League in Basaksi. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the most important thing is most of the guys that are yeah I'm with them in in Fasi Karagum. I play with them in Basaksi. I think I have two guys there. Mm. And I play with them in Basakshi. One guy also, I have actually two guys also that I play with them in uh, Adana Demi. One now is a player, and the other one is, uh, I think, is one of the coaches also. Mm. And I have a couple of friends also, them that I, they play in the Super League also there. So I think it's like the players that we are there now is like it's a form of like Super League players, which you're trying to qualify mm. the club to the Super League. Nice. So nobody see himself as in like. If it's one player or whatever. Mm, mm. Now, talk, talk, tell me a little bit about the Black Stars. You've been in and out of the Black Stars. I remember I watched your debut. It wasn't too good. You've had things after that. You've picked up um, yourself from that one. CK Akono is now head coach of the Black Stars. Um, there's an Afcon qualifier on the horizon when the COVID-19 eventually goes away. Are you excited about the future with a new coach? And what role do you possibly think you could play if you are given the opportunity? Yeah, for me, I'm happy. Like asking, like, you know, finally, if try to the the the, the GFA are trying to change something in the system, you know, they're trying to change the system. Maybe they bring the coach that like believes in the young guys and trying to give the young guys a, a chance to to show their their talents or to show their, their their how they can really be in the in the national team. So for me, as a football player, it's good. For me, asking like, I know for sure if I've been playing with. Uh, Every game, week in week out, I'm sure like I will get a chance to 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 fix in in the national team again, and it's not gonna be like something that I to be on and off. I think it's gonna be permanent. Mm. So that is why I'm that is what I'm trying to do now because I know how it is. Because if you don't play football for like maybe a year, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of different thing altogether. Because if they actually work okay, fine, you've been in this team and what happened? You didn't play. It's gonna be like a question mark on you so i don't mm -hmm. want that question mark yeah that is the reason why i i i encourage myself to play in mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to end playing time so that when i go back to basakshi i'm not gonna find things difficult and things are gonna be easy for me to to come back strong in the national team also mm. so finally before we go we don't have a lot of time but just one more question i know that you and thomas party are like basically brothers you came out from Temayu together, you live around each other when you come to town. There's been a lot of talk about him possibly going to Arsenal to play football, even though he's a big guy at Atletico. As a friend, as a footballer, and as a brother, how, what do you think Thomas should do, and how do you think he should handle this current situation? You know, um, for me, what I would say is um, I would be happy if he, if he goes to Arsenal. I'll be very happy if he goes to Arsenal, because now, he has done it all in Atletico because now everybody knows Thomas Partey in Atletico. Everybody know him. Like you know, you cannot say nothing. You cannot say nothing against him in Atletico because he's one of the, I think one of the best players in Atletico now. So he has done it all there. So I think he have to just move forward to a different league, 
to 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 do what he has been doing in Atletico for people to see that it's not only Atletico that he can play but he can also play differently as well. Mm. Well, Joe, I have to leave it to you, unfortunately. I have so much to ask, but hopefully we can get on Zoom uh, in the coming days and then we can talk a lot more. Um, hope you take care of yourself. I'm sure the league is starting uh, in a couple of... Um, the league is starting in a couple of days, so take care of yourself, stay injury-free, and then we'll talk again. All right, thank you very much. Stay blessed also. I appreciate the time.